Every four years, every presidential campaign season, we have come to expect unscripted moments on the campaign trail. Unscripted moments that stick with a candidate throughout their time in the race. Uh, they're usually off the cuff, usually unplanned, but they do leave an impression. Uh, one of the categories for this type of thing tends to be cultural references. Candidates making cultural references or sometimes missing them. So like there was Walter Mondale with where's the beef or uh, Poppy Bush not knowing what a barcode scanner was in a grocery store. Cultural references can work in a good way to humanize a candidate or they can make them seem elitist and weird. Uh, sometimes, though, a cultural reference moment does not necessarily help or hurt the candidate. Uh, it just sticks with you anyway because it seems telling in some way about the candidate as a person. In that category, consider Newt Gingrich's cell phone ringtone. Can you hear what he's playing there? I love that we have the subtitle showing music. Uh, it, it, it's Dancing Queen. Um, uh, Newt Gingrich having, ha having as his cell phone ringtone ABBA's Dancing Queen has been reported in the past, but this is actually the first audio confirmation we have had of Dancing Queen going off in his pocket and him having to take his phone out and turn it off. Newt Gingrich's cell phone ringtone is Dancing Queen by ABBA. Go. Uh, John Huntsman, on the other hand, should be thought of less as Swedish disco uh, and more as Pacific Northwest genius grunge. And to hear these two go at it over here, it's almost incredible. You've got Governor Romney, who called it a fraud uh, in his book, No Apology. I don't know if that was written by Kurt Cobain or not. Get it? See, Kurt Cobain, all apologies. A Nirvana reference. Apparently totally lost on that Republican debate audience in Florida. Judge your audience, sir. Mr. Huntsman may be wizard, but that was not a magic moment. Uh, Mitt Romney, in, in trying to humanize his rather stick figure persona, uh, Mitt Romney has tried to drop some pop cultural knowledge on his peeps. Last time around, you'll remember he sort of blew it with the who let the dogs out thing. He was with a group of African-American youngsters. Do we still actually, do we have the um, who let the dogs out tape? Do we still have that? Still awkward after all these years. Uh, Mitt Romney's cultural references, who, who, this time around, um, have not been as embarrassing or bordering on scandalous as that one. Uh, they've more just been kind of uh, confirming him as seeming stiff and out of date. There's something special about lakes where you don't get salt on you after you've been swimming, uh, where there's no seaweed. Um, well, you don't have to worry about things eating you in the water, right? And I don't worry about sharks, but somehow in the back of my mind, after seeing that movie Jaws, you know, it just, it just makes you think. In some respects, this is the, uh, the Obama economy is a where's Waldo economy. It, it is it, it, finding a job, a, a good paying job in this economy is harder than, find, harder than finding Waldo in one of his books. I mean, this is a, the Obama economy is a where's Waldo economy. Not a clip of Mitt Romney from the 90s. Uh, that was last month. Where's Waldo? Yeah. So every four years, we get treated to inadvertent and ill-advised and weirdly telling cultural references from the presidential candidates. Happens every, every time. Uh, we also, of course, learn something about them as people from their gaffes. Gaffes like Rick Perry's brain freeze oops thing at last week's CNBC debate. Or Newt Gingrich demanding that politicians who took money from Freddie Mac give that money back, even though his own lobbying firm took something like $1.6 million from Freddie Mac. Gaffes happen. People screw up. Newt Gingrich also insisting at one point this year that he did not believe what he himself had said about Paul Ryan's Medicare killing budget. He said anybody quoting him saying that was lying. Don't quote me. If you quote me, it's a lie. But there's one candidate in the race this year who is different. The art project formerly known as Herman Cain uh, is giving us a whole different way of looking at stuff like this on the campaign trail this year. Herman Cain is purportedly a presidential candidate, but he has essentially no campaign staff to speak of. He also uh, continually makes what are treated as gaffes, but even though the media treats them as gaffes, they are frankly too perfect to actually just be mistakes. More often than not, when it, w what he does that gets covered as a mistake, as a gaffe, is really a sort of genius, obscure, has to be deliberate cultural reference. It's art referencing art. 
And we, ha we have a rich tradition of this, right? I mean, you can't understand the genius of what these Muppets are doing here to explain the letter G unless you know that they haven't just come up with this whole competitive school singing conceit out of nowhere. They are making reference to another cultural product that is the TV show, Glee. Art referencing art. You cannot truly appreciate, for example, the subtle glory of Lou Barlow from Dinosaur Jr. doing a soft-spoken acoustic emo version of the song Round and Round, unless you know that the song was made famous by this hair band. You can't get the genius unless you know that the band that originally did this is a hair band called Rat with two Ts. It's art referencing art, or at least art referencing hairband. It, it's an internal cultural reference. And in order to understand the Herman Cain art project, you not only have to understand modern Republican presidential politics, you also have to understand what he is doing as his art project. You have to understand the breadth of cultural genius that he is drawing upon to make his art. Herman Cain is begging us, all of us, to please get in on the joke. So in chronological order, when, when Herman Cain finished that Iowa debate and randomly started talking about a great poet in his closing statement, what was the great bit of poetry that he was referencing? It was the theme song to the Pokemon movie. Life can be a challenge. Life can be a challenge. Life can seem impossible. Life can seem impossible. It's never easy. But it's never easy when, when there's so, so much, much on the line. Is on Herman Cain quoting the Pokemon movie during a presidential debate. Then there was Herman Cain's 999 tax plan. Where was the only other place in nature that a 999 tax plan already existed? The video game called SimCity. SimCity is not just a video game, it is an old school, awesome video game about urban planning. The makers of SimCity, clearly in on the joke at this point, even launched their own attack ad against Herman Cain. <laughs> Jobs plan. That's my That's my my SimCity clearly realizing what's going on here and getting the genius of it. With video games like SimCity and, and songs like the theme from the Pokemon movie uh, checked off his list, Herman Cain's art project uh, has since decided to move on to um, other movies. I'm proud to know the Koch brothers. I'm very proud to know the Koch brothers. I am the Koch brothers brother from another mother. Yes. I'm their brother from another mother. Yes, you have heard the brother from another mother thing before. Somewhere. Before. You have nothing just like me. I wouldn't say nothing. He has me. His brother from another mother. That would be Rush Hour 3. When you are pulling quotes from the third film in a trilogy like Rush Hour, I submit to you that you are trying to tell the people something. And at this point, it should have been clear to everybody involved what exactly was going on here. But just in case it wasn't clear enough, today, Herman Cain tied a nice little bow on top during a campaign stop in Nashua, New Hampshire. We've got plenty of experts. And a leader knows how to use those experts. We need a leader, not a reader. We need a leader, not a reader. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you The Simpsons Movie. I've narrowed your choices down to five unthinkable options. Each will cause untold misery. I pick number three. You don't even want to read them first? I was elected to lead, not to read. Number three. Hat tip to the website Talking Points Memo for flagging that as the cultural reference, the cultural source today for the Herman Cain Art Project's latest Not a Gaff. The Herman Cain campaign is an art project about running for president, that much is clear. But the thing that is underappreciated, the thing that I think deserves some attention, even maybe from the art world, 
is that this is not just an art project. This is a really good art project. It is complicated. It is widely sourced. It is pulling from movies and songs and video games and even TV shows that were turned into movies. The 2012 election will likely be remembered for many things, right? But, the, but, the, but Herman Cain pulling off really quite good political performance art for months at a time right in the middle of it is something we will all be able to tell our grandkids about. I am dying to see the next act.